I just wanted to be a sculptor. I actually built a, a house before I got uh, became a sculptor and was able to, you know, work out many of my ideas uh, while building a house. And so I went back to school and and uh, so that put me on a good path to making a, li uh, a living and making a life's work out of it. Well, I always think that people love a, to look out and see a path that's going off into the woods, you know. And so there's a there's a sense of that when you see this work. There are a lot of doors and windows, and you um, imagine, oh, maybe I could go in there. Maybe I could. And, and when people, other people are in there, they're in enlivening it. So if you see somebody in there, you think, ah, oh, I could go in there too. Starting point for this one, we looked at a lot of secret insect trails that are in the garden. If you look on the back of leaves. You look at the ground insects make like little pathways so we took that boring pattern and we laid it out on the ground we scaled it up um, drill a series of holes along the perimeter of that shape of that plan set scaffolding around it and then we use a scaffolding as kind of an exoskeleton and we pulled the shape we want so we wanted this wall to lean way over we pulled it over initially the intertwining of the sticks um, make a very strong um, wall that you could use and it, you can feature all kinds of architectural strange architectural details of having walls and flying buttresses and leaning over and leaning one way and then another it's a kind of a mindless operation in which your eye is connecting with with the wall so there's this constant dialogue between what you're seeing and what you're thinking about how you could improve the look of it and make a much more luxurious wall where you feel kind of unselfconscious. You don't really think about what you're doing per se. You're just kind of locked into where you think it ought to go. So uh, I get a big stick like this and uh, I know it's too long for me to pull through so I'll, I'll make two pieces out of it. I can use that top in a different way. Sometimes I'll bend the thing just slightly because of uh, I'm trying to make it a little bit more flexible. Then I'll drive it down in here like this. I wanted to cross these two, two these pieces because Xing is also a way that make thing, lines look more interesting. So if those two lines cross like that, uh, they'll when we stand back, they'll look a little bit better. It's better to go behind it if you can to kind of get things down in the, in the midst of it. Sticks have an inherent method of joining. If you drag a stick through the woods, you see what I mean? It entangles and everything. So we're using that basic entanglement as a way to join this sculpture together. And also sticks have a little flexibility. So if you flex the stick and pull it into a matrix, it snaps back and holds itself in place. So, you know, we uh, I've learned to uh, use sticks in uh, lots of different ways. It's a slow process of building up the kind of quality of line. So it just, uh, just work at it for hours. Pretty soon you have something that people really aren't enticed by. They really want to be able to come over and explore this. So when people see this work, they often are reminded of those, you know, the big Mr. Twister or simple, hard and easy trees they climbed when they were kids or a walk they took or the first kiss they had or, you know, something that very significant that occurred to them while they were walking in the woods. So all of those things kind of are promoted uh, when you look at this work. And so uh, it's, it's got a lot of starting points. Initially, uh, people evaluated this work as as uh, sticks were found objects. You know, now they're connected with environmental issues. You know, I'm still making the same work, but the context has changed and the relevance has changed. I think one of the great things about a garden is that people come here for respite and enjoyment and uh, to get away from the world. And they also connect with, with nature, which is such an in inherent need that we have. Uh, usually you get about two good years. You get one great year and one pretty good year. And you try to take the piece down while it still looks good.
because you know there this is a public exhibition and uh, you want it to be serviceable right to its very end so uh, uh close to the two-year mark the garden will start evaluating it and say well maybe you could stay up another month maybe another month and so at a certain point just like some of the flower beds that fade here they'll say hey let's plant something new 